In this lesson, I want to talk about the concept of conservatism as it relates to the idea of ideology. So, interestingly, um, one of the things that we think about when we look at the different branches of conservatism is to think about some of the key features of conservative thought. Now, this lesson is going to ask the question as, the, as to the extent to which we can even describe conservatism as an ideology itself. Um, because conservatism is very different to the other kinds of political ideologies that exist. Because it is reactionary, it exists in reaction to radical political movement. The extent to which it is a single coherent set of, um, um, a set of principles in and of itself is something that is debatable. So um, some have made the claim that we should not label conservatism as some kind of ideology, since it is not necessarily coherent and this implies that uh, in order for an ideology to be an ideology, it requires coherency, which is something that is a debate within and its in and of itself as well. Um, but people like Max, uh, Math, uh, Michael um, Oshkot suggests that conservatism is more psychology than ideology due to the nature of its origin, i.e. in reaction to some of the political events which takes place during the revolutions uh, in France and in America and in England, and in, in England at, at points, um, you can come to that conclusion that conservatism may be seen as an incredibly flexible um, type of idea. And so as a result of which, it is not necessarily coherent and, and has a single codified base of understanding. It is more adaptable to the various radical political change that exists at the time. As such, a conservative from one century will be very different to a conservative from a different century, or even a conservative from one part of the world may be different from a conservative in a different part of the world. Now, because there aren't necessarily any specific underlying principles, it means that you can adopt um, whatever type of conservatism depending on whatever type of environment. Now, a counterclaim to this is that, well, conservatism will be different depending on the century or depending on whereabouts you are in the world, but isn't that also just the case for other political ideologies? Liberalism 200 years ago is very different to what liberalism is today. That's what neoliberalism even uh, exists to try and um, uh, to try and accommodate the idea of modern liberalism being too um, uh, too too uh, too different to the to the political uh, classical liberalism that existed under people like John Locke. But then a counter to that argument is, of course, the idea that well, neoliberalism is almost something of a conservative ideology in and of itself because it acts as a reaction to the modern principles of liberalism that were being developed. So in a similar way that conservatism reacts against radical political change, um, neoliberalism reacted against radical political liberalism, such as modern liberalism. That's what Hayek argued in The Road to Serfdom. So to an extent, you could even argue that neoliberalism is very different. But how can you then reconcile the fact that modern liberalism is very different to classical liberalism? Because then it also implies that liberalism is also incredibly flexible. All of these are just food for thought in terms of a, a debate to be had. Uh, critics have also pointed to a number of cons inconsistencies within the beliefs of, our, of conservatism, which implies two things. One, that conservatism isn't an ideology, and two, that the ideology itself, for something to be an ideology, there has to be a certain degree of consistency in terms of beliefs. So, for example, conservatives support, often support, the traditional institutions of monarchy, but would not support the traditional institutions such as trade union movements. So instead of being somebody who is supporting the monarchy on the basis of it being a traditional institution, you are supporting the monarchy on the basis of something else, because trade union movements are also traditional institutions. So if you do not support trade union movements, then what is it that is the reason why you would support the monarchy? An answer to this is, of course, because conservatism reacts against radical political change. The radical political change that exists in relation to trade union movements is, of course, uh, left wing socialism and communism. And so a reaction to socialism and communism um, would mean that you would uh, not support trade union movements as a conservative. In general, one may struggle to find an ideology in conservatism. Some variations have attempted to establish some more coherent and substantial principles of conservatism to, to attach ourselves to that kind of belief. And that may be um, interesting to examine. And what is what we're going to look at in uh, the future lessons is these different kinds of conservatism. Um, 
because conservatism is so flexible in terms of its reaction to different political movements, um, there have been a number of different kinds that have developed over the years. Uh, we're going to spend some time looking at traditional conservatism. We will look at one nation conservatism. And then we will look at the new right and examine how the new right um, issues uh, essentially align with this idea of conservatism uh, in more detail in those lessons. And it should also be noted, by the way, that the idea of conservatism not being an ideology is not necessarily a problem for conservatism. There obviously does exist conservatives and conservative political movements and conservative policies. The fact that they're not necessarily coherent or, or exist in terms of having an ideological foundation isn't necessarily a bad thing. It is just a, an interesting comparison that can be made between liberalism and conservatism or between socialism and conservatism or even between anarchism and conservatism.